It's hard to expect much from Apple's new M3 equipped MacBook Airs. Two years ago, we got the MacBook Air M2, which was a complete redesign, kind of the first one the MacBook Air has had in over a decade. Last year, we finally got the 15 inch MacBook Air, which also had an M2 processor. And now Apple is just shoving its new M3 chip into both of those systems. They look exactly the same. There really isn't much else changing. So what else is there to say about these things? Now, I'm not saying these are bad computers. It's just that we've been a bit spoiled by Apple over the last few years. It's only been a few years since Apple completely moved over from Intel chips and over to its own mobile chips, which were incredibly fast and incredibly efficient. Then we got complete redesigns for all of their computers, the laptops and the desktops. So right now it kind of feels like we're hitting an innovation plateau for Apple. It's sort of like when you're on an airplane and you're taking off and you inevitably hit cruising altitude. Everything is just kind of safe and comfortable right now for Apple. So sure, these computers look exactly the same as before. They are a little faster. The M3 chip, according to Apple, is around 20% faster, both for single core and multi-core processing, around 15% faster for the GPU speeds compared to the M2. But there are also a handful of new features, which may be enticing to some people. For one, there's finally dual external monitor support. So you'll be able to hook these up to two screens and actually power them. The only downside is that only works when the lids are closed to these computers. I didn't have two monitors here to test out out, but it seems like a cool feature, especially for creatives who may want to just move over to bigger monitors when they get home, or for office workers who move over to hot desks and maybe they'll be in a different spot every day. It's nice to be able to just plop these computers down and power two screens. Both new MacBook Airs also support Wi-Fi 6E, which is a slightly faster variant of Wi-Fi 6. According to Apple, it'll be around twice as fast, but you'll only see those speeds if you're also connecting to a Wi-Fi 6E router. When it comes to the design of these computers, there really isn't much else to say. We kind of said it all two years ago when the MacBook Air M2 debuted. But honestly, I still love this overall design. Both computers, both the 13 inch and 15 inch MacBook Air M3 are under half an inch thick. So they just feel impossibly thin for machines that are this size and this kind of caliber. The 13 inch weighs 2.7 pounds, which is also pretty light. And we have seen lighter 13 inch ultra portables out there, especially from LG and Asus. But I do have to say, those things don't often feel as premium as what Apple is delivering here. So it's just the overall fit and finish that feels good. I think the 13 inch MacBook Air feels super smooth. It's like, it's like as smooth as a, as a river stone, but it is so sturdy and strong. The build quality you don't really get from most other manufacturers. The 15 inch MacBook Air M3 is half a pound heavier. So it's 3.2 pounds. It's more noticeable, but it's still pretty lightweight for a computer of this size. Personally, I still lean towards the 13 inch just because I spend most of my days typing and I'm on Slack and maybe occasionally doing video chats and some photo editing. But if you need a big screen, this is actually a pretty nice machine to have. Portability wise, the 13 inch is so much easier to move around. I can throw it in a bag and just run out the door, but I'm not gonna knock the 15 inch MacBook Air too much. We've waited a very long time for Apple to get a big screen consumer laptop back out here. And I think for some users, it's going to be great. It has a bright and beautiful screen. It's pretty high resolution, a high pixel density. And if you're doing a lot of photo editing, if you're doing anything that really needs screen real estate, timeline editing for video or audio or even 3D rendering or something, stuff like that, you may actually appreciate having a bigger screen. And also for older users or visually impaired users, it's really helpful to have a bigger canvas to just zoom in a little more without, you know, cramping up a tiny laptop screen. Now, given how good these computers look, I'm not surprised Apple didn't touch the design at all. It would have been nice to see a few upgrades. I still think a USB-C port or something to charge on the right side of the computer would be super helpful. Maybe put the USB-Cs on the left and the MagSafe port on the right, just if you're in a situation where your power cord can't quite reach the left side of your machine. As always, I wouldn't knock having a SD card slot in these computers too, but if you want that, I guess you're just gonna be moving over to MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro 14, for my purposes, has the SD card slot, has a bunch of other things. So Apple's just clearly differentiating, I guess, what these different computers actually do. Another thing, it would be nice to have high refresh rate monitors. We are seeing a bunch of those now, even from Microsoft, but we're seeing them from Asus and others too. These computers still run at 60 Hertz, so they're a little more choppy when it comes to scrolling and moving around. And after being spoiled by the ProMotion screens on the MacBook Pros, it just would be nice to see something on the consumer side of things. Apple just tends to be slow about this stuff. At the very least, maybe we should just be grateful there's still a headphone jack. Most other companies that are producing 13 inch ultra portables like Dell 
are getting rid of that thing entirely. So it's nice to still see it here. For our testing, Apple sent the midnight 13 inch MacBook Air, which is almost jet black and features a fingerprint resistant coating that mostly works. I think on some occasions you still see kind of a mess and the keys themselves on the keyboards definitely look messier than the actual coating of the laptop. We also got the silver 15 inch model, which looks pretty good. This is like the color we've been seeing for the past couple years from Apple. Both of these computers were powered by an M3 chip with a 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. They start at 1099 and 1299 respectively, but the configurations we tested cost $400 more. If you're just looking at the cheapest possible options, the 13 inch MacBook Air starts with eight gigabytes of RAM, a 256 gigabyte SSD and an eight core GPU. And the entry level 15 inch starts with the same RAM and storage and a 10 core GPU. Personally, I would say try to save up for at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and you will definitely feel the burn with just 256 gigabytes of storage too. So whatever you can do, spend a bit more to get a higher config. I didn't expect to see any huge performance boosts from the M3 chip, just given the numbers Apple's been putting out there about these computers, but I was pretty surprised. Both laptops scored around 300 points higher in the Cinebench R23 single core test compared to the M2 MacBook Air. And when it came to the more strenuous multi-core CPU test, the 13 inch M3 Air was around 1700 points faster and the 15 inch model was around 2400 points faster. So, you know, there are noticeable speed bumps here, at least when it comes to a benchmark. There was a more noticeable difference in Geekbench 6 where both computers were around 40% faster than before. Um, I just didn't expect to see it that high. While it's nice to see some of these results, um, I would say that's not exactly a reason to run out and buy these computers. The MacBook, the new MacBook Airs aren't really meant to replace the M2 models. They're really more targeted at people who have an M1 MacBook Air, which are almost four years old now. And Apple has made a lot of improvements in its chip design since then. And if you still have an Intel system, this is the perfect chance to upgrade because these chips are brand new. New. You don't have to worry about another refresh coming soon. And the other good thing about having new MacBook Airs is that the older systems also get a little cheaper. The M2 MacBook Air is now the baseline model for Apple. So that is now $999. And that's a still a pretty great system. It has a slightly slower CPU. But I also wouldn't be surprised if you find stores selling older stock of those systems or refurbished models or used models popping up in marketplaces all over the place. You'll likely find a good deal on the M2 MacBook Air. So if cost is your main concern, take a look there. You're certainly better off getting an M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM rather than an M3 with just eight. When it comes to general computing, these computers didn't really surprise me too much. I was already really satisfied with the M2 MacBook Air and just how fast it was when it came to loading apps, multitasking, even doing some occasional high-end work like rendering audio. That was a great computer and these are just slightly faster. So no matter which one you pick, even if you get the basic 13s with an eight-core GPU, you'll still be able to do most of your work pretty easily. I'd say gaming is the bigger surprise this year too. The M3 chip is just more capable than what we saw from the M2. I was able to play Lies of P in 1080p plus, that's 1920 by 1200, with high graphic settings across the board. And it stayed at a stable 60 FPS most of the time. Occasionally would dip down into the low 50s, but that's still super playable and just kind of shocking to see for a computer that is so thin and so light. The director's cut of Death Stranding was also really smooth to play and that's right on the App Store now. It is nice to see Apple offering more games uh, right on its storefront. Steam is also getting more Mac compatible games. There aren't any changes on the screen front for these machines, but they're still really nice to use. They have a 500 nit brightness, which is pretty bright, uh, even outdoors in direct sunlight. They're just not as nice as the ProMotion screens on the MacBook Pros. They're still stuck at 60 Hertz. You're gonna get pretty good color accuracy from these. Uh, they also support HDR and Dolby Vision. You just won't get the really nice stuff you get from those ProMotion screens on MacBook Pros. And pretty much everything else in these computers, Apple has just gotten very right. The 1080p webcam in the notch still looks very good. The keyboard and the trackpad are fantastic, and I wish more laptops had something of this level. Even the speakers are great. The 13-inch has a four-speaker array. The 15-inch has a six-speaker array, which is much louder and much bolder. In some cases, you could just find yourself playing music off your laptop, um, and it will probably sound better than a cheap Bluetooth speaker that you have laying around. Battery life is pretty great too, just like it was on the past few M series MacBook Airs. Apple says that if you're playing a video on the Apple TV app, it should last for 18 hours on both systems. I didn't have a chance to do a full battery test because I got these computers just a couple days ago, unfortunately. But I did notice when I was running a 4K video at full brightness, full screen on both of these systems, it only used up 40% of battery life over 10 hours. So that's a pretty good figure, I'd say, especially if you extrapolate that to the end. 
I used to use the MacBook Air M2 for several days without needing to charge it. And just from my general usage so far, I'm seeing that to be pretty true with both of these systems. So there really aren't any surprises with the 13 inch and 15 inch M3 MacBook Airs, but I suppose that's to be expected. Apple has just spent so much time improving its hardware, optimizing its chips, that right now it's just pretty comfortable. What we have now are great computers with fantastic screens, wonderful performance, great battery life, and really that's kind of all I want in a laptop. And even if you're not excited by the M3 MacBook Air, at the very least, they're gonna make the M2 MacBook Air a lot cheaper. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our laptop reviews. If you dug this video, be sure to like and subscribe.